Okay, I just need you, I, I, wanna, I wanna take a moment, I wanna, read, I wanna read a scripture to you. I just feel like, um, let's just start this way. Can you close your eyes with me? Can you close your eyes and let's just set our hearts again in this moment. Um, I'm carrying something that I feel that needs to be, I need to, I need to, I need to bring it and um, let me just say it, let me just say it this way. Maybe there's somebody in here today um, and you've, this is, let me just say it how I feel it. You've been to church your, your whole life or majority of your life. Um, but there's something blocking, something, there's something stuck. Um, and the word I want to bring today is, I think, very important for us to not just hear it, but to hear it. <laughs> not to just hear it with our ears and grasp it with our knowledge, but to hear it in our heart and to catch a, a, what, what I would say is a revelation. This is the word I would use, a revelation, meaning it's not from me. It's not from my own mind, but it's from him. It's from him. Revelation 3.20 says this. Everybody listen to this. Behold, this is Jesus talking to you. This is Jesus talking to you. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears, you've heard so long, you've heard, but you haven't maybe heard in your heart. Just sitting there with your eyes closed. Can we do this? Can you pray this with me? Can I just lead us in a prayer today? Can you maybe open your hands like you're receiving something? I just feel to lead us in this moment before we start. Can you all pray this? Say, Jesus, I'm listening. Open my ears, my spiritual ears today, that I would catch a revelation of your love. I'm not just hearing, I'm hearing with my heart. Thank you for your word that it changes me and I'm ready. In Jesus' name, amen. God, I just pray today that your word doesn't return to you void as you promised it. I just speak right now against a deaf and dumb spirit. The enemy that would try to close our spiritual ears so that we would walk out of here without hearing what you want to say to us. And I speak right now that our ears would be attentive to a stranger's voice we would not follow, but we hear the great shepherd's voice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Christine. Thank you so much. Good. Okay, can I preach? We're all listening now. We're hearing. I felt that last night as I was, um, as I was praying and woke up this morning. God was really speaking to me on that. And my prayer this week as we start this new series, which we're titling Greater Love, Greater Love. Everybody, everybody say Greater Love, Greater Love. It's not just because it's February and Valentine's Day that we're speaking about love, but I felt it was um, important in the rhythm, uh, the spiritual rhythm of our church to hear this and to grasp this. And my prayer this week was, God, that we would catch a revelation of love. God, I don't want to, I, I, was, I was preparing for the message and I hit my knees and I didn't want to just to, to preach a, a message about God's love for us, but I wanted to catch a revelation 
of God's love, something that changes us and shifts us from the inside out. That's my heart today. So I need you to be with me, okay? So I want to I want I'm titling this message today in love. In love. Woo. Has anybody ever been in love before? Can I just tell you a story since my wife isn't in here? There was a moment I thought I was in love before I met Megan. And I, uh, I was dating this girl, and I was, as they say, head over heels. And I, I was thinking in my mind, oh, I'm going to marry this girl. And I would, I would just, I would have flowers every day. I planted her a garden. I don't know why. I just did everything because I love you. I love you. I was in love. And uh, all of my friends who had been my closest friends for my whole life kept telling me, Daniel, man, she's not right for you. Have you ever had this happen? Or your, or your mom, gentlemen? This is not the woman I pictured for you, son. Or your dad waiting to beat the other guy up because this is not who he wanted to marry his daughter, to be with his daughter. All my friends saying, no, this isn't the one. This isn't the one. What are you doing, man? She's, she's controlling you. What are you doing? But guess what? I didn't hear them. I didn't hear them. I was in love. You guys don't know what you're talking about. Romeo, how art thou? Romeo. See, Romeo and Juliet had everybody against them. I'm in love. How many of you know that when you're in love, it's hard to see on the outside? It's hard to see out. I want to read to you today a verse, a portion of scripture, and I'm going to preach through this as we go through that maybe some of you are familiar with, maybe some of you never read before, but it's a story that Jesus told. It's called the parable of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15 um, starts off in verse 11, and Jesus is telling stories about lost children, people who are lost and then are found. And Jesus then explains this story about the prodigal son. And he said, let me read it to you and I'll explain. And he said there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property in reckless living. I know none of you have ever lived recklessly. You guys are safe. But this guy squandered his wealth in reckless living. This can look differently sometimes. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in need. Somebody say, life happens. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. All the kids, where are all the kids at? All the kids in the room say, oink, oink. That was terrible. All the kids in the room on Community Sunday say, oink, oink. This boy left his dad's house and, and then got a job feeding pigs. Any of you guys want a job, make some money to go feed the pigs? And he was, watch, and then it says, and he was longing to be fed with the pods the pigs ate. And no one gave him anything. He wanted to eat pig's food. And still he couldn't eat pig's food. He was so hungry. Now you guys don't like to eat so many things, right? I'm talking to my kids over here. But at least I'm not putting pig food on your table. He did, they wouldn't even give him pig's food. And he found himself longing. Can I just tell you, every human, 
every human, at their core, is searching for love. Every human, at your core, you're searching for love. You're searching around to receive love, and your behaviors, you, you, you behave in a way that you can receive love. Can I receive affirmation? You're searching for someone to give your love to. There's some hopeless romantics in the room that you've watched too many soap operas and you've watched too many chick flicks and you're just hopeless romantic and you just want to give somebody your love. We're searching for love. You're looking to feel love. I just need to feel love. Some way to experience love or, or some of us have been so hurt by people that were supposed to love us or so hurt in this subject of love, whether it's affirmation from your father or whether it was a breakup or whether it was something that happened to you, somebody became cold towards you and now what you do is, is you try to numb yourself from feeling love because love hurt me once, it will never hurt me again. And you're searching for something to medicate, something to focus on. I'll focus on my career. I'll focus on that so that I don't ever have to get hurt by love again. I just won't commit anymore. I'm never going to commit because every time I commit, the person that is supposed to be committed to me breaks my heart. I won't open up. And then I'll become angry and bitter. And Valentine's Day comes around and I'll just join the, the party of singles who are angry and bitter and uh, who've been hurt by love and we'll just have an anti-Valentine's Day party. We're longing for love at our core. It drives us. But can I tell you that longing is not just for love from somebody. It's not just from love for for, for something or for something to be filled. That longing is a deep longing for God. Everybody, people who don't believe in Jesus, they don't know it, but they're longing for God in their heart. They're longing for love in their heart because God is love. I need you to catch this today. 1 John 4, 8 says, anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. God just doesn't love you. He is love. Oh, you got to catch this. He is the very essence of love. God God didn't become love because you needed it. He caused you to need it it because he is love. When he designed mankind, he designed you with a place in your heart that desires love because he wanted an intimate relationship with you because he is love. He wasn't just designing you to to, to desire love from him, but he was designed you to desire him. The longing for love is a longing for God. Listen, God can't stop loving because he is love. Oh, God doesn't love me anymore. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Psalms 145 says, The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding, abounding in steadfast love. It's impossible for him to stop loving you. Love isn't just something that we have between us and God. I love God and he loves me. If love was something between us, then it communicates, then it can be taken away. The love can go and the love can come. Now your feelings towards God can change, but God's feelings towards you do not change. Hear me. Romans, somebody needs to hear this today. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or a sword? Nothing can separate you from God's love. Your actions can't separate you from God's love. Your failures can't separate you from God's love. Here's the revelation I want you to catch today if you catch nothing else. God is love. When I am in his presence, I'm in love. Everybody say, in love. I'm just talking about in love. 
I'm talking about I'm in love. Can you catch this? I was praying this day, God, give, give me a revelation of love. And I was on my knees in my office praying, God, give me a revelation of love. And he says, he says you need to realize that you just don't fall in love with me. You don't, I don't just love you, but when you are in my presence, you're in love. When you're in my presence, you're in love. That's why the son in the story of the prodigal son, he was in the presence of the father. You have to know the story is about God and you. It's about God and you. It's about the love of the Father. It's about his love towards his people. It's about the fact that, that the son thought there was something better on the outside, so he decided to leave the presence of the Father and go chase something else. And then when he realized that that couldn't fill his need for love, it couldn't fill his need for affirmation, it couldn't fill his desires, he was longing to be back at the Father's house in the presence of love. We all desire love. When I'm in his presence, I'm in his love. Continuing the story, it, it says that the, the son, it says, but when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? Can I tell you when you're in love, when you're in God's presence, you don't have to look anywhere else. You don't have to search anywhere else for love. You don't have to search anywhere else for acceptance. Yeah, sure, you could get a pat on the back. You can be encouraged. But ultimately, if everybody says, I hate you, if everybody says that you're the worst, that you can be confirmed and you can be solid and you can stand in a foundation that says, I'm in his presence and I'm in his love. Everybody else can hate me, but God loves me because I'm in love. The son says, I will arise and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. How many of us have felt like this in our approach to God? I'm no longer worthy. I've done too much. I've, I've broken so many rules. I've, I've committed so many sins. I've hurt so many people. I've left a wake of destruction in my past. I'm dry. I'm weary. I feel, don't feel worthy anymore. And he says, treat me as one of your hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But watch this. I need you to catch this picture. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. <laughs> but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him. Why you're so far gone, why you're a long way off, why you've ran away, God still sees you. Well, you're a long way off. God sees you. God knows you. God sees you. God's love towards you is not determined by your actions. God's love towards you is not determined by your love towards him. Somebody needs to hear this one, Romans 5, 8. Are you with me? Everybody with me? Because I gotta go. We gotta go. But God shows his love for us. This is how God shows his love. I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna preach on this during this series. But God shows his love for us while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. Christ didn't die for you because you said yes to him. While you were still broken, while you were still a sinner, God, while you were still a long way off, Christ died for you. I need somebody to say amen to that because that's my story. That's your story. Even if you're watching or if you're in this room today and you're a long way off, he still died for you. That's the only way back to him is through his death, burial, and resurrection. While you were still a long way off. While you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. He saw you. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Do you see the picture of a father longing to embrace his son? And, his, and the son said to him, Father, I've sinned. I've sinned against heaven, I've sinned before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, I love that the father never addresses his shame. He didn't even address his unworthiness. He didn't even say anything to the son. 
Sometimes what you need is not to hear the voice of God, but to experience the embrace of God. Sometimes you've been asking God for direction and for a sign, but you just need to be in his presence. You just need to feel his embrace. He ignores it, and he turns to the servants. Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Can I tell you that when you are in love, your failures don't count against you? The Father isn't concerned about your failures. God isn't concerned about your failures because you're in love. He put on his robe. He put, on, he put on the Father's signet ring, the, the, the ring that speaks of authority, the ring that speaks of, uh, of value. He puts on the robe, which speaks of the robe of righteousness. I can't see your dirt anymore. I'm clothing you in righteousness because when you're in this house, it doesn't matter what you've done. You're in love. You're in love. And can I just tell you, when you're, when you're in love, people won't, can't help but experience God's love on you. People, you don't have to, you don't have to preach to people. You don't, have, you don't have to say a word. They will experience God's love on your life because you're in it. Colossians tells us to put on love. Put on love. When you're in love, you don't have to fear. When you're in love, you don't have to fear. For those of you who've grown up in homes with your parents, you could probably identify with the fact of feeling safety inside your family's home. Not all of you have maybe experienced that, but feeling safety. My kids often will climb in my bed because they want to feel safe at night when it's dark. Can I tell you that when you are in love, you don't have to fear. When you're in love, because the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Not just, not just being afraid of the dark, but being afraid of what people think about you. And he said, and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this, my son was dead. Worship team, you guys can come as I, as I read this last part. It's Community Sunday. We're going to take communion in just a moment. For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. Can I tell you that there is a, there's a sound of love? There's a celebration over your life. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed a fatted calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry. Can, can, I, can you see this picture? Before I read this next part, I need you to see the son grew up in love. He grew up in the presence of God. He grew up in the presence of the Father. He grew up in his house. And he longed and looked on the outside and thought, maybe I can receive love. We've all been there. We look outside of God to be the source and we look for love in all the wrong places. Isn't there a song? Anyway. And he leaves. And he leaves. He realizes that that love will never satisfy him. And the only love that will ever satisfy him is to be in his father's presence. In the presence of God. And then his brother gets angry. Because his brother was out in the field and he heard the music in the house. But he was angry. And he refused to go in. He refused to go in. Because there's a religious spirit, there's a religiosity that says, why does he get celebrated? Why is he in church? Why is she praying? Why? 
And that very same spirit will also keep you out of, out of love. And all you'll experience is not, is not a relationship, but a religiosity when you're on the outside looking in. He refused to go in. But even then, his father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you and I never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But then, but when this son of yours comes, came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fatted calf for him. And he said to him, son, you were always with me and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate, be glad. For your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and now he's found. Can I tell you that when you're in love, listen to me, you can know love. You can experience and encounter love when you're in love. You can feel it. It's an encounter. It's not just a sensation. It's not just something I know in my head. It's an encounter. You You can be in love. You can give love when you're in it. You give it. You can commune with love because God is love. Love is the person of God. The answer to fear is to be in love. To be in his presence. The answer to your rejection is to be in love. The answer is when you're feeling empty is to be in love. God, listen to me, God is omnipresent. He never leaves you nor forsakes you. But there's a moment where you're, you're, he's present with you, but you step into his presence. You step into his presence. And you, you can sometimes feel tangible love. Can you close your eyes with me? Before we take communion... It's right where you're sitting. Close your eyes. And I want you to hear this, not just hear it. I want you to know and experience God's love. Can I just lead us for a moment in his presence? God, we thank you that you're present. God, I thank you that you are an ever-present God. Help us right now to be more aware of your tangible presence. As some people would say, your manifest presence where we step into love and experience love. I thank you right now that even in this room and those watching would right now in this moment feel tangible love. Can you just receive this as if God is saying this to you? This is from his word. Son, daughter, I knew you before you were even born. I loved you before you knew me and loved me. My love is so deep for you, I sent my son to die and to save you. Son, daughter, I forgive you so you can come to me. I forgive you. You can take refuge in me. I'm a safe place. I've never left you. I've never forsaken you. I've been there in the tough and I've been there in the the highs and the lows. You, son, daughter, are fearfully, wonderfully made. I'm inviting you to come to me when you are weary and when you're burdened. Come to me and I'll give you rest. I see you, I see you, and I know you. I've numbered every hair on your head. I see you even when you're a long way off. Before you ever chose me, I chose you. You will never be able to fully grasp my love for you, but I'll need you to experience it. God, and I just thank you that you you are love. 
Thank you that it, your love right now in this moment changes us, touches a place deep in our heart that we've been longing for, that we've been looking for in other things and other places. Maybe God is speaking to you right now. Just keep our eyes closed. We're hearing with our heart and not our ears. Today, maybe you were here and the reason you're here is to hear that there's a heavenly father who loves you. And instead of looking for all the counterfeit loves that are available today, you can find yourself in the safety and security of his love. Maybe today the greatest message that you needed to hear was that while you were still a sinner, Christ died for you. It might surprise you to know that your whole life, God, like the father in the story of the prodigal son, has been eagerly waiting. Watch, watch, watching with his eyes always on you for the moment that you would turn from the pigsty, turn from the counterfeit love and come back to him so that he could run out and embrace you with open arms, not even having to say anything, but just embrace you. It might surprise you. He's been waiting your whole life. And if today you're here and you've never turned around and said yes to him, or maybe you've ran away from him and you're, and today you're making a decision to come back into the love and embrace of the Father. Here's what I want us to do with our eyes closed. If you're here today and you're making that decision for the first time, I'm telling you, just like the son who had to consciously choose to turn around and go towards his Father, I want to give you the same invitation, the greatest decision you can ever make today. With all of our eyes closed, if that's you here today, could you just lift your hands in the air and say, that's me, I want to make that decision today. Yes, Yes. I want to make the decision to come to the Father today. I want to make the decision to come back to His embrace and to His love today. Father God, I just thank you that we are in your love. Can you pray this with me, church? Say, Jesus, thank you that you love me. Even when I was a sinner. Forgive my sins. I'm coming back to you. I surrender to you, Jesus. I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, open your eyes. The greatest act of love that in human history is that Jesus died for us. Grab a communion cup, and we're going to take communion in this moment. Communion is a great representation of God's love for you. It's actually to remember that we are in love. I am in him as he is in me. I am in love. He says to take this in remembrance of me. Take the juice and the bread. And today we're going to take communion and we're going to remember that we're in his love today. No one's obligated to take this. The Bible even describes how communion is for those who have made a decision to follow him. He says, he's saying this to his disciples, to his followers. And that's why every Sunday we give you an opportunity to come to know Jesus as the most important decision of your life. bread is just on the top, the cellophane, and then you open the the second portion to get to the juice. Let me pray over the bread and over the juice today, and that we're not just taking another religious sacrament, but we're taking a a holy covenant-making sacrament that says we are in Him. God, I thank you that we're in you. And it was by what you did on the cross, your death, that your body was broken, that your blood was shed, that it drew up a covenant between us and you. 
that says we are in you and you are in us, that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. That the old is gone and the new has come. God, I thank you that your body was broken for us so that we could be healed. Your blood was shed for our iniquities and our deep and rooted sins. You put them on yourself and died with them on the cross. I thank you that our old self is gone and our new has come. Help us to be more aware of your love today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can take the bread and the juice today. Can we just worship one last time together? You can stand to your feet as you finish taking communion. Let's just focus in on the love of God today. We're in his love, Jesus. Thank you, God, that you cause us to be in you. Cause us to be in you, Jesus. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus.